David Lewis here with Mission Air Conditioning and Plumbing. Want to take a brief moment to explain to you the absolute very basics of what an air conditioning and heating system looks like and does in our market in Houston, Texas. So um, let's take a look as to how an air conditioning system actually works and how these pieces are connected. So the first um, thing that we'll get to is kind of the direction of the airflow. Your airflow in this case, this is a horizontal setup. Some setups are vertical. Um, in this case, you've got air coming in this side, supplying out that side. So this would be what would be called a return air, where the air is drawn and returned to the equipment. Then you're gonna hit a, a filter. Not everybody has one of these, but the filter is here to keep dirt and dust and debris, obviously you from breathing it, but more importantly, from getting on all the components of the system. The filters that are protect the system from that dirt, a, if it wasn't there, you would have much higher likelihood of having failure. Uh, so you need a filter to protect the system. Again, air is moving this direction through the system. The only thing that is moving air is through this box called a furnace. So in here behind this control board is the actual blower, which is actually spinning and moving air, regardless of whether you're heating or whether you're cooling. The furnace matters whether you're in summer or winter. So it's gonna blow air across a heat exchanger and that heat exchanger went on and burning and, and heating is actually going to provide heat to the house. Um, when it's in cooling mode, it's not gonna work at all. It's just gonna be a pass through ultimately to get to the evaporator coil. So the furnace will blow air through the system uh, throughout the year. After air travels through your furnace, it's ultimately gonna get to the evaporator coil. The evaporator coil, which is this box here, is where the primary function of actually cooling a house occurs. Now, cooling is actually um, the absence of heat. So what is actually occurring within this box is that heat is being absorbed ultimately and run to the outdoor unit. Where that's uh, occurring is that you've got refrigerant that runs through these lines. So this is a looped system. Inside of this coil is actually a coil. It's this looped deal where there's lots and lots of track where the um, air passes across these refrigerant lines and those refrigerant lines are what are, are absorbing heat and running all of that heat outside in order to reduce the amount of heat in the house. So um, the action is cooling here, but it's also dehumidifying. So they're gonna be, those, uh, that coil is gonna be cold enough that uh, moisture is occurring, condensation is occurring inside of there, and that moisture is leaving. And that is actually a great thing, especially in our environment in Houston, because humidity is, is very uncomfortable. So we want to remove that humidity and reduce it within the house to make it a more comfortable environment. So that's the evaporator coil and that's where the primary function of it is occurring. After the evaporator coil, we do have the supply plenum, which is just where the air is then distributed to the ducts and throughout the house where it's received uh, at the registers with, within the home. Once air is cooled or heat is removed and dehumidified, that air is gonna end up in a supply plenum. That supply plenum will pressurize, air will pressurize within there, and then the air will then be distributed, that cooler air will be distributed throughout the house through ducts uh, that are connected to these start collars, uh, and those ducts will supply air, obviously, to each individual room throughout the house. Now, outside of the home, you've got a condenser. Uh, the condenser is connected to the evaporator through refrigerant lines. So it's a looped track, there are two lines. So one is going into the home to the evaporator, which is the direction of refrigerant, and then one is coming back. And so that refrigerant, as it absorbs heat inside, is gonna pull that heat outside and re ultimately reject it, get rid of that heat off of the condensing unit itself. It's gonna condense that refrigerant and try to run it back into the house uh, once it's able to get rid of the heat that is coming from inside. So it's a loop track. Refrigerant should never leave this system. Uh, so if you have refrigerant leaking in your house, it's a problem, you need to stop that refrigerant leak so that the action of the um, cooling of the house actually can continue to occur without a problem. So condensing unit, this is what most people think of as their air conditioner, it's a condenser. It's the outdoor unit, which is ultimately getting rid of the heat from inside um, where it's connected to the evaporator. So that's the basic system. You have heat rejection here, heat absorption at the evaporator coil, and air moving through the house through the furnace.